and I just wanted to welcome all of you to today's presentation. The Senior Source is all about making older better, and we're so delighted to bring Cindy to you and offer today's program. As caregivers, we're typically always on the go, and we have a tendency to think about ourselves last. So um, today's presentation is going to be all about helping caregivers make better food choices and talk about some quick, easy meals. So thank you again for joining us. We look forward to today's presentation. Thanks, Kimberly. And now I'd like to introduce you to our pres present presenter, uh, Cindy Kleckner. Cindy is an award-winning registered dietitian nutritionist, a culinary expert and author. Um, Cindy works with numerous companies and organizations as a health educator, a recipe developer, and national speaker at conferences, consumer events, and corporate wellness programs. So we're really excited to see all the different recipes uh, Cindy's going to share with us today. In a little bit, I'll put um, the recipe packet in the chat. So if you want to grab that document there, you can and print it. Otherwise, it will be available on the Senior Source website for a little bit. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Kimberly. You know, I'm so delighted to be here today, and I really appreciate the invitation by Senior Source and, and the, the connection that was made by dear colleague Neva Cochran. Um, we want today, today to talk about nutrition. Um, actually, March is National, Nutri National Nutrition Month, which is actually a, a nutrition education campaign sponsored by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. So it's a perfect month to kick off uh, nutrition information. I want to make a disclaimer before I get started that this is about healthy eating, and it really doesn't uh, pertain to medical nutrition therapy necessarily. So it will not take the place of visiting with your healthcare provider. Anyway, it looks like spring has sprung, and it's really a nice time for renewal. Along with spring cleaning and also your home and your wardrobe, it's such a great time to maybe think about some making some changes in your eating style. Spring brings kind of a natural shift towards eating fresher, cooler, lighter, and more hydrating foods. And it's time to think about more balance and maybe some you know, increased energy levels. So when we talk about balanced meals, it provides not only an immediate, but also a long lasting benefit. It helps to support a strong immune system, brain function, and also increased energy levels, which we could all do with. How many of you fight fatigue as a result of the many ways you're tugged as a care provider? Are you tired a lot? Do you feel drained? Um, are you sluggish? Sluggishness can be the result of many things, but, but really trying to focus more on making better food choices can help in a really big way. Are you looking for some new ideas that are satisfying and nourishing? And that's what, just what we're gonna do today. Uh, we're gonna talk about some new um, ideas and meal and snack ideas, but also cover the basics about nutrition really quickly. But first, we're gonna take a quick inventory of eating styles. I thought you might enjoy this. Are you one of those unconscious eaters? Do you eat while you're doing something else? Like if you're working at your computer, you're using your mouse pad as a doily. Do you view sitting down and eating a waste of time? Or maybe you're one of those chaotic eaters and that's due to your overscheduled life. Your eating is so haphazard. You really are one of those people that gulp and go when food is available. Or like a lot of people, are you an emotional eater? Stress or uncomfortable, uncomfortable feelings trigger eating, especially when you're alone. It's eating in response to an emotion, and that could be sad, mad, hurt, annoyed, irritated, rather than really feeling that physical hunger. Are you a professional dieter? Like a lot of people, are you a perpetual dieter, always trying out trendy new diets because you think you should, or maybe because everyone else is doing it? Or are you a waste not eater? You eat uh, food irregardless of how full you are. Are you a member of that clean plate club? And also, are you a refuse not eater? That's when your eating is encouraged by those candy jars and foods that are on the counter and uh, also maybe on your desk and they're really impossible to walk away from. Or better yet, are you an intuitive eater? An intuitive eater is when you make choices that honor your hunger 
and also respect your fullness and that you've really learned to enjoy the pleasure of eating, which is my goal for you today is to really get back to that. So that's really what we strive for. So when we're talking about nutrition, um, and especially when it's uh, in relation to being a care provider, you have to learn the art of taking care of yourself. Because I think any of you who've flown in an airplane will understand that when the uh, flight attendant starts her little speech, she always says, before you take care of the person beside you, put the oxygen mask on. So you can't take care of anybody else unless you first take care of yourself. So that's really an important thing. It requires being honest and also realizing the changes needed. You may not realize that everyday stresses are really driving your eating habits and all those little nibbles and bites that you take kind of add up at the end of the day. Eating styles are so individual, as individual as we are, and meal times can be very hectic. And so it might be a time for a change. And that's why I like to talk about this springtime renewal. So besides taking an inventory and seeing what kind of eating style you have and making some tweaks, the next step is really to declutter. And a lot of people interpret that as I have to eliminate all these different foods, you know, whether it's white flour or pasta or, you know, maybe it's fruit because people think it's too high in sugar. Um, I would suggest maybe taking a different approach, and that would be decluttering your negative attitudes, um, especially when it comes to food. Um, I like to think of food as it's it, for all foods fit. You know, there's no such thing as good and bad. There are, there's no junk food, there's junk diets. So it's really important to think about all foods fit. You have to look at the quantity that you eat, the frequency that you, the frequency that you eat it, and also how it's prepared. Those are the three things to keep in mind. The next step in this spring renewal is to really get organized. You know, even as a dietitian, I can't get by without doing a little meal plan, even if it's just sketching out what I'm going to have for the week based on what the schedule looks like. And of course, you want to make a little grocery list before you go to the store, just so that you can keep within your budget and also make sure that you have, you know, some nutritious meals planned for your week, no matter how crazy or hectic they can be. So organization is really important. I always say failing to plan is planning to fail. So it's important to, you know, think about that a little bit. And then last, as a part of the spring renewal, it's important to think about freshening up. And along with that comes trying to achieve a few more, uh, a, bit, a bit more energy level. You want to make sure that the food and beverages that you're eating actually power you through your day. If you're looking for more energy, if you wanna be healthier, active, or if you're simply just trying to feel your best, the plate um, is really the best and perfect way to start. So what does power your body? I like to cover this really briefly because I think it's important to understand how um, food really affects your body. So when we, when we think about food, food is another word for energy. Calories is another word for energy. So if you get the best possible quality of diet, you're going to produce better energy in your body. Um, when we talk about food, all food is made up of macronutrients, such as proteins, carbohydrate, and fat. And there's a lot of misunderstanding there with those food groups or with those nutrients. When we talk about energy, that's where we get energy is from protein, carbohydrates, and fats. And protein foods, you know, such as lean meat, chicken, fish, eggs, nuts, all those kinds of things actually help you to sustain your energy. So that's why it's important when you're having your, when you're planning meals to have at least three food groups at a meal and at, le at least have two food groups at a snack. And at least one of those food groups should be protein. I'm holding this uh, my plate concept. It's a nice little visual to give you an idea of what it takes when you're planning a meal. So part of your meal should be made up of protein, like I just mentioned. And then we also want some grain. And it's really good and beneficial if we focus on high fiber foods that are made from whole grains, like whole grain bread, you know, whole grain muffins. Uh, and then, of course, brown rice instead of white rice. Those are two important food groups. And then the rest of your plate should really be full of color. And that's where we focus on getting a lot of those micronutrients, 
micronutrients are within protein, carbon, fat, and all the foods that you eat. But what they do is they help your body use protein, carbohydrate, and fat for energy. So that means that you could certainly subsist on a piece of chocolate cake and a Coke and um, you know sweets all day. But in terms of the energy production, it's really going to be low. And so therefore, you may be getting your calories to sustain your weight, but your energy throughout the day may be really poor. And that's why when it comes to snacking, it's not that snacking is bad. It's just that if we choose proper foods to help fuel our body, we're going to be so much better off in terms of nutrients. When we talk about the vitamins and minerals, there's some that really help with energy production. Things like iron helps to prevent anemia. Uh, same thing with B12. It really helps to prevent certain kinds of anemia that help fight fatigue. There's also another uh, group of, of things, compounds that are in foods. I like to call them bioactive compounds or phytochemicals and antioxidants. And those are other nutrients that are contained in food that really help our body you know, uh, keep strengthening our immune system. And it helps our body fight off a lot of things that are going on in the environment from the inside out. So again, colorful foods, whole grains are really gonna help with all of those uh, foods. So it's important to think about my plate when you're planning your meal. It's a very simple and easy way to make sure you're getting all your foods in there. So now we're going to kind of dive into a demonstration, and I'm going to go through this really quickly because I, I want to show you a lot of different things. But And you're going to have a handout that's called Hunger Games, Quick and Easy Meals and Snack Hacks. And I like to approach it from the standpoint of different food groups and then maybe different techniques. The first one is Extraordinary Meals. Eggs, you can't get better than eggs when you're talking about a meal or a snack because it's such a good quality protein, has a lot of nutrients. And believe it or not, you can even buy hard boiled eggs, you know, in a six pack. And even though I'm so much into cooking, I really love to buy these for quick and easy, you know, snack and meal ideas. Eating one of these can really power me through a tennis match in the morning. But there's so many things you can do with this egg. You can actually eat it. As a, as a whole you know, egg, or you can take it and chop it up with a little bit of uh, relish, maybe a little bit of mayonnaise. If you're trying to cut back on your calories a little bit, you could even use something like Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt to make your egg salad and have that with a piece of whole grain toast and, uh, or, or whole grain bread. And you have really a wonderful meal or snack. So that's one idea with an egg. Another one is a really quick and easy, egg, uh, I call it a, um, a coffee mug scramble, where I take a couple eggs and I put them in a cup or a mug that's actually been uh, coated with some nonstick spray. And I have my favorite mug here, you can see, best Grammy ever. My little granddaughter gave me that for a little gift. So what I'm gonna do is just scramble up my egg. I'm gonna put a little bit of milk in there because in my mind, whenever I'm cooking um, or eating, I'm always thinking about nutrition by addition. And what that means is, what can I add to this meal that makes it more nutritious? Instead of always thinking about what do I have to eliminate? So in this case, I'm adding my protein. I've added some dairy using my milk. I'm gonna have some green spinach that I've chopped up. I'm gonna add a few cherry tomatoes. I'm going to mix all those up and then I'm going to toss this in the microwave for about 30 to 45 seconds. And um, stir it up and just see what we get. And you can keep adding to that. If you have leftover veggies from the night before, you can add those. If you have a, a leftover mushroom somewhere in your drawer, you can add that. Um, if you're wanting a few more uh, bits of flavor, you can add some very sharp cheddar cheese when it comes out just to melt it over the top. And that'll give you some more nutrients from the dairy group like calcium and vitamin D. So again, my mind is always going, what do I have in my fridge? Um, how many food groups can I add to this? And it really makes it not only a nourishing, but also a very satisfying meal that's also pleasing to the eyes because of a lot of color.
And those of you that might be concerned about sodium and salt, by adding some of these other food groups, you're actually adding more flavor. Let's see how our mug looks. So I have wonderful, I'm, I'm scrambling this up again. I know you can't see this that well, but I'm gonna throw it in there for another 30 seconds. And it is so quick and easy. You don't have to think about it because most people have eggs in their fridge. If they're not using whole eggs, maybe you have some egg beaters, which is just egg white. Um, you can throw in any vegetable. And like I said, the cheese is kind of a nice flavoring agent on top. So here we go. And how long did that take? No time at all. So we have a wonderful little meal. Again, if you're trying to pull in another food group, you can have a whole grain, uh, half of an English muffin, you can have a half of a bagel um, or some, some more of that whole grain toast. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with a starchy carb, especially if you're choosing one that has whole grain so that you're getting the benefit of the fiber and also the extra antioxidants that those foods contain. So that's one really quick and easy meal that I hope you might even try one day. It's very, very good. I'm gonna throw a little bit of cheese in there. Cindy, can I add a comment real quick? Okay. Um, I saw that someone put in the chat, they like to add canned diced tomatoes with green chilies to their scrambled eggs, or that's if someone cool. doesn't like the chilies, just plain canned diced tomatoes, they're good on salads too. That's awesome. And we are going to talk a lot about canned goods today because there's so much misinformation about nutritional value. Wonderful. If you have a can, uh, if, you, if you don't get to the store very often and have a lot of fresh goods, canned goods are equally as good. So I 100% I put my uh, faith in that. That is wonderful. Another thing that I'm going to do here, if I can heat up this uh, this little pan really quickly is I want to show you how quick and easy it is to do the same kind of thing on the skin in a skillet. So I always have a little bit of oil and you can see I put my oil in a little squeeze bottle because that way I can control it a little better when I'm trying to cook as opposed to trying to pour it out of a big you know bigger container. So I buy these little um, squeeze bottles and I keep my oil in there but when we're talking about the best oils to use it's important to think about unsaturated fats, which could be canola oil, you know, anything that has um, like a uh, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. A lot of people these days are using grapeseed oil, avocado oil. Some of them can get rather expensive, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with just using a plain old uh, canola oil, which is very neutral in flavor. But it gives you that, uh, it, it does the same um, benefit of, you know, just adding a little bit of oil to your skillet. And a lot of people over the years have become phobic about fat. Um, the reality is when you're cooking something like greens, you're actually benefiting and absorbing the nutrients better when you have a little bit of oil in your food. So in this particular recipe, I'm going to do the very same thing I did in the microwave, but I'm going to scramble this egg in the skillet. And I'm gonna scramble the same vegetables, except this time I'm gonna throw in some onions. I'm gonna throw, can you hear that scramble? Throw in some onions. I have some red bell peppers. And you know, some of these things you can actually get in the freezer section of the grocery store uh, that are already chopped and frozen. And that might be another quick and easy way to, you know, be able to have everything processed as opposed to taking the extra time to actually cook it or you know, uh, prepare it and chop it. So you can see how wonderful this looks. And by the time I get done with my scrambled eggs, I end up having a whole lot more veggies in there, which gives you that a little bit of extra food on your plate, which again, I think a lot of people as they get older, especially they, they kind of feel cheated with a small portion, but the more veggies you add, the more um, nutritional value, but you're also getting a lot more uh, quantity of food. And so it really kind of gives you that false sense of, oh, this is a wonderful big meal. So here's my scrambled eggs, quick and easy. And like I said, you can scramble anything into them. And also don't worry about the yolks. And like I mentioned before, some of you may have had some specific instructions from a doctor or maybe your registered dietitian. And maybe you have to modify some of the ingredients that we're talking about today 
and that's certainly fine that this particular presentation is really geared for healthy eating. I also have in front of me some uh, seasoned black beans. Black beans, uh, any kind of bean actually, is a really good source of plant protein and also very high in fiber. So it really helps with digestion, it helps with blood sugar control. So you can even throw some beans in there. So I would take this basic uh, scrambled egg dish and I can eat it as a meal or I can put it in a tortilla. And I like to buy the corn tortillas. They have various sizes. You can get whole wheat tortillas. They're, they're usually a little bit better than the white tortilla, which is just flour and shortening and water. But what you can do is make a little soft taco out of this by stuffing your scrambled mixture into the tortilla. And the tortilla would just take the place of your bread. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's a wonderful, nice soft taco. You can also pour some salsa in there, put some cheese and uh, call it a meal. I mean, this is absolutely wonderful. So you can change up the type of starch you're using just to add a little bit more variety and kind of make your uh, meals a little bit more pleasing. So if you buy a package of 10 tortillas, you know, think about different ways that you can use those. So this is just another idea for a wonderful egg dish. Now, if you wanted, you could actually scramble all those same ingredients and pop them into a little mini pan, uh, like, a, like a mini muffin pan, spray with your nonstick spray, and then take and put all of your liquid egg and vegetable mixture inside the little muffin tins. And you can bake that for 350 for you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, just, just depending on the, um, the, you know, how hot your oven is and, and how deep your little muffin tins are. And what I like to do is make a bunch of these ahead of time and then just put them in the refrigerator. And what a wonderful, quick and easy snack to just pull a few of those out of the refrigerator and uh, zap them in the microwave. So that's another really quick and easy idea that you can do with eggs. Um, those I call mini frittatas, and you can add herbs and spices and, you know, any veggie, any, any, um, anything that you really like. If you want to add another protein, you can certainly add some beans in there. You can have the cheese, and then you can also add maybe even some lean ham if you have some of that on hand. So those are just a few things. You can also take these scrambled eggs and put them in a tortilla, and then, uh, butter the outside using a little bit of soft margarine, and then you can just toast it in your skillet and make a quesadilla out of it. So there's just a few really quick and easy tips on what to do with eggs and uh, some tortillas. So we're gonna move on from there. And if there's any questions, feel free to put those in the chat and Katie will be sure to, to let me know, um, you know what your questions are. I do see a question. Um, Neva is asking, can you freeze the cooked eggs you make in um, the muffin tins, the mini frittatas? Um, you certainly can. You certainly can. The uh, quality may be a little different when you when you take them out. Um, you can also put them in bigger muffin tins. That might be um, that may make them a little bit better when they're smaller. You know, they depending on how you wrap it, you might have a little freezer burn. But it's important to pull them down after you take them out of the oven and maybe put them in a Ziploc bag. And uh, I usually double bag everything just to be sure, but certainly that would absolutely work if you, you know, if you wanted to do that time, uh, time saver for Great. sure. Cindy also added, uh, adding a little cottage cheese to the egg cups reduces the rubberness uh, and sauteing the veggies first adds a ton of flavor. Okay, that sounds, that's a wonderful thing to keep in mind. Anytime you want more flavor, which is really what healthy cooking is all about, is you want to create some caramelization. So by creating, uh, by cooking your veggies ahead of time, before you add your eggs, you're adding that extra layer of flavor. And you can see here that I've also included some spices, or excuse me, some herbs. I have rosemary, some mint, I have some parsley and, um, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a garden or even a counter garden, you know, just throwing those in. But even if you don't have fresh, you know, even just doing scrambled eggs with, um, you know, Italian seasonings like basil or oregano that are dried really makes a wonderful dish. So a lot of, yes. 
I just said yum. <laughs> okay, so a lot of things to do with eggs and um, very nutritious. You know, there was a time where everybody was so fearful of eating eggs, and it's just not something that we need to worry ourselves about these days. Has right, the school of thought this? has the school of thought changed on the cholesterol issue with eggs? Yes, the cholesterol content is less, and um, Back in the day, they were probably about 350 milligrams in egg, and now it's probably closer to 2, 250, and depending on the size of the egg. And um, the reality is, this, the, the thinking in terms of blood cholesterol levels and cardiovascular disease is really more um, saturated fat is more of a problem. So if you're one of those people that are really inclined to be grabbing a lot of fast food that is fried, if you like sauces and gravies and uh, ooey gooey cheesy dishes and creamy sauces, those are the kinds of things that are going to be a lot more detrimental to health um, as opposed to an egg yolk. So, um, you know, keep that in mind because, you know, anytime we make a decision, we want to look at the big picture. And uh, for a while, people were just throwing egg yolks away. And, you know, they're, they're, they're really good for brain health. It's, you know, it's, it's a powerful protein source that uh, we should not be worried about. All right, our next hack is going to be uh, rotisserie chicken. Now, a lot of people, again, seem to be concerned about the, you know, how high in sodium they are. I pick one of these up regularly. And nowadays, you don't even have to peel it off the, the chicken bone, right? Because you can go to the store and you can get the rotisserie chicken that's already been pulled, that's already been shredded for um, a, a little heftier price. But these little rotisserie chickens, some of them come savory, which may have a little bit more salt and sodium. Uh, some of them are like lemon pepper. And then some are really just simply prepared, simply roasted. And that's what I would try to shoot for because anytime you're using the chicken, maybe you don't want the, the flavor to compete with something else you're using it for. Plus, maybe you can control your sodium a little better. Now I keep bringing up sodium, uh, it's not something to be feared, but when we think about uh, the average or the standard American diet, it does have a lot more sodium, but not because of salt, but because of the ultra processed foods that we rely on. And I'm not saying they're bad at all. You know, I think we should all, you know, have good balance in our diet and choose foods, uh, choose a wide variety of food, but if you heavy, re, heavily rely on um, ultra processed food, you're probably going to get more sodium in the long run. I wouldn't be fearful of a rotisserie chicken because it's such good protein and there's so many different things you can do with it. So I'm going to show you just a few. One, for instance, is um, a quesadilla. And um, the quesadilla is so quick and easy, just like I showed before. You can take your quesadilla, and I'm going to use a real tiny one, and you can just add a little bit of um, soft margarine, or you can even use your nonstick cooking spray, just to kind of add a little bit of um, spread on that little tortilla. And I like to throw mine in the skillet. This one's not quite hot enough, but, and then I add my chicken that I've already chopped up, and you can add some cheese, Cheese is kind of like the glue that kind of holds it all together. And um, there is such a thing as low fat cheese, but you know, my philosophy on that is unless you are really, um, you know, having to follow an extremely low fat diet for some reason, a little bit of cheese, especially if it's sharp cheese, like a sharp cheddar goes a long way. So you don't have to use a lot of it, but it's gonna give you a lot of good flavor. So I put some cheese in there and then you could also mix in I like to do um, seasoning. So in this one, I'm actually gonna add some sriracha sauce because that's gonna give me some really nice punch of flavor. And, and I'm gonna even add a little bit of um, plain unflavored yogurt and kind of mix that around. And that kind of makes a really good uh, quesadilla. Um, in my house, quesadillas are kind of like the old grilled cheese sandwich. We, anytime we have a little bit of leftover meat or chicken or even seafood, we kind of throw it in a, a tortilla for a quesadilla the next day. So any of those kinds of things make for quick and easy meals. 
And this one is not quite hot enough to, to actually uh, caramelize. So it's not, it doesn't have the brown finish, but we're gonna call that a little meal or snack, but see how cute these little street tacos are. And you can have two of those, or you can have a 10 inch taco and, um, and stuff that, and that would be uh, kind of the same amount of calories and nutrients. So that's another idea. Another favorite of mine is stir frying. I like to call it, um, you know, walk around the block or, you know, party like a wok star. I have these little wok skillets, but you don't have to have a wok skillet. You can use any type of skillet. But the beauty in this is that the middle gets extra hot and um, you can sear your meat, sear your vegetables. And then when you're done, you kind of just slide the veggies up the plate or slide the meat up the side of the, um, the, the uh, skillet. And then you can add your next ingredient. So I wanted to show you a quick and easy meal. Instead of starting from raw chicken, we're gonna use the rotisserie. But instead of using fresh veggies, because maybe you haven't had time to go to the store, we're gonna use some frozen. So I'm gonna show you some of the um, different products that are out there at the grocery store. This is actually kind of a stir fry mix. And this one has broccoli, carrots, sugar snap peas, and some water chestnuts. So it's perfect for a quick and easy meal. So I'm trying to get the skillet heated up really good. Let's see, yes. And um, because my chicken is already cooked, I don't have to worry about it, right? I, don't, it, I have to reheat it. So I'm gonna cook that last. Normally I would cook my raw meat first. I heat up my skillet. And then in this case, I'm gonna use a little bit of sesame oil just because I like the flavor when I do uh, Asian food, but there's no reason why you couldn't use any oil you have in your pantry. So I'm heating up my oil and then I'm gonna add some of the vegetables as soon as this gets good and hot. And I'm gonna stir fry those until, until those are good and uh, completely cooked and actually thawed and cooked. And then I'll just throw in my meat and then at the very last minute, I'm going to throw in a prepared Asian sauce that I purchased at the grocery store. And they have everything from teriyaki flavoring to this one happens to be Kung Pao. They have some sweet and sour. And, you know, a lot of people might get, you know, a little concerned, you know, dietitian promoting a packaged product. The reality is for as much as you're using, you're getting a whole lot of flavor and not a lot of sodium and not a lot of you know, sugar. This is um, for two tablespoons, it's only 50 calories. It has uh, very little fat, almost none. And it has uh, the equivalent of one teaspoon of sugar. So it's not a bad product. Um, so what we're gonna do now that it's good and hot is I'm gonna add some of these veggies. Cindy, is there, uh, if you don't have a wok, did you mention what other kind of pan you could use? You know, I'm sorry, say it one more time. If you don't have a wok, is there another type of pan you can use on this dish? You can use any skillet. You don't okay. have to have a wok. The beauty of the wok is just so that you can move the food up the side, but you can use any skillet you have. It does not have to be a wok. Absolutely okay. not. Great. So we're going to cook this. And um, the nice thing about wok cooking is get everything ready. It's called mise en place. That's what chefs call it. Have everything ready to go. And the, the actual stir frying takes no time at all. Now this little um, pan here that I'm using today is electric. But if I was on my gas stove, these veggies would already be done. But because it takes a little bit longer in this um, burner that I have, this electric burner, it's not gonna, it's gonna take a little bit more time. But after my veggies are done, and I always wanna hear that sear, because that means that the skillet's hot, the oil is hot, and I'm gonna get the best freshest flavor and it's gonna take no time at all. And then because my chicken is already cooked, I'm gonna throw the chicken in after the veggies are done. And after they heat up a little bit, I'm gonna open up the jar and just throw in a little bit of sauce. And if you go to a really, really nice Asian restaurant, you'll notice that the food is not dripping in sauce. Um, we kind of try to Americanize everything in our culture. And all you need is a couple of tablespoons for a little bit of flavor. 
And I have my whole, you know, my whole meal done here in really liquid split, no time at all. And um, the packages of brown rice and uh, various different kinds of rice that are available now at the grocery store make this stir fry dish a snap to make. This takes 90 seconds in the microwave. You snap open the package, pop it in the microwave, 90 seconds later, you have whole grain brown rice. You can find basmati, jasmine, Spanish rice. These that are just plain don't have any extra sodium because they're just a, it's just one ingredient. But the more flavorings it has, like if it has a garlic flavor or if it's a Spanish rice, it might have a lot more tomatoes or whatever in it. So maybe a little bit higher in sodium because of the preservative. But in this case, you have a, a whole grain product. You have your stir fry dish and um, a very quick and easy meal. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Put our rice, which I haven't cooked, but we're gonna squeeze some of the rice on the plate. And again, you know, it's um, quick, easy, nutritious, flavorful, and I sure wish you can smell it because it, it has such a wonderful flavor. And wait till you see the color. The, the, the real goal when you're talking about healthy eating and healthy cooking or more balanced cooking, it really is a matter of color. So what I like to say is when you're trying to eat healthier, um, have color and then nutrition will follow. So here we have broccoli, we have carrots, we have all those wonderful things with a little bit of leftover chicken. Anybody can do that. So if you're like me, you have your stir fry pan or your regular skillet on the stove at all times for this really quick and easy meal. All right. So those are just a few things that you can do with chicken, but think about some of the little casseroles that you could make. My family loves uh, chicken tetrazzini. I usually use less fat in it. I may not use as much flour. I kind of make a lighter cream sauce. I'll use maybe some skim milk or, or some uh, canned evaporated skim milk, which is definitely a lot creamier, but it you know maybe have a lower uh, calorie content. So that, and also you can use this in soups, which I do a lot. You can make your average chicken salad just by adding some uh, mayonnaise or even yet a combination of uh, mayonnaise and maybe some um, plain unflavored yogurt, you know, just to kind of add a little bit more nutrition from the calcium and vitamin D. So there's a lot of things that you can do with rotisserie chicken, as well as just eat it as a main dish. So I hope that gives you some good ideas that you can take away and maybe try um, you know, adding those to your grocery list. I'm going to move on to the next dish. Okay, so we, we've covered a lot of ground already. The next one is uh, one of my favorites. I was not really a Girl Scout, but I discovered these foil pouch dinners along the way. They're so quick and easy. Um, what you do is you take a piece of foil and um, I like to use extra duty, heavy duty, or double your regular foil. And uh, you can see here that I've chosen to use some chicken tenders. And I tend to buy these when they're on sale because number one, it's a really easy way to do portion control. If you notice some of the chicken breasts these days are extra large. If that's the case, you might pound them down and maybe cut them into two or three pieces. But when you have your tenders, it makes a real, you know, um, portion control. And they're also always tender. So I have my uh, chicken tenders. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some frozen corn on top. And then because I had those beans open, I'm going to add some of my beans. And the secret ingredient is your, uh, your favorite salsa. I happen to like one that is a chipotle flavoring, but some of them are really, really hearty and, and already have the corn and the beans in them. So you don't even have to add. But if you have anything open like that, um, just pour the salsa over top of your chicken. And then the goal is to just form a little tent. Fold over the top. 
shrimp the side. Now, when I'm ready to eat, I throw this in an oven, like anywhere from 350 to 4, 425, just depending on how fast you want it done. And that uh, chicken or fish even is gonna steam inside this foil pouch. And when it's time to open it up, we don't really have time today to kind of cook it, but you can see that it's a complete meal. And then if I want to get really fancy, I'm going to throw in a little bit of cheese again, just for that extra flavor. And then maybe I'm going to crunch up some tortilla chips and put those on top. And honestly, this is not a bad meal. And you could make these foil pouches ahead of time and just have those in your refrigerator. Now, if you get tired of chicken, you know, maybe you are one of those people that really enjoy a nice piece of salmon and maybe you buy them frozen. You can put a piece of filet in there and instead of the salsa, you might go with uh, maybe some fresh lemon slices or a squeeze of lemon. Um, but what I like to do is always put some sort of veggie in there. So if I have uh, the frozen veggie mix that I just used, or if I have some fresh uh, zucchini or whatever it is that you like, you know, make it a full meal. Think about what can I add, nutrition by addition. So these foil pouch meals are just absolutely wonderful and a quick and easy meal. And you can make them ahead of time and just you know save yourself some energy and time during, those, uh, during the six o'clock scramble when everybody's hungry and you're wondering what to cook. Okay, so that is our foil pouch dinner. And there's so many different ideas you can do. You could even just do veggie pouches if you want. Um, I've done the uh, par cook, par, um, already cooked rice with some shrimp and do like a little shrimp oil with uh, some, some corn, uh, maybe a piece of sausage in there. So just think about things that you enjoy and think, how can I do those a little quicker? If it's in the summer and you don't want to turn the oven on, you can certainly do it on the outdoor grill. And that works perfectly as well. And, uh, you know, it's all about getting the meat cooked. And the important thing is making sure that you test it to be sure it's done before you eat it. We always want to think about food safety. All right. So that is our foil pouch. I call it campfire meals without the campfire. All right. The next one is even easier. You can't get any easier than this. I like to call it my favorite dump meal. Actually, it's my husband's favorite dump meal because he is, um, he loves to prepare this, this meal. And it's actually a taco soup. And for the sake of time, I wanted to show you that I cooked the meat ahead of time with a, with a raw onion that was chopped up just so that you can, um, you know, just so we can save time. But I'm going to put it on this burner just to see if we can get some heat going. But I want to show you how easy this soup is. I have my ground meat. That was the hardest part. Now, if you're one of those people that prefer ground turkey, that certainly works well. But the next thing I'm going to do is dump. I'm going to dump corn, whole kernel corn. A lot of people fear corn because they think, oh, it's starchy. But it's a whole grain. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, another ingredient would be like pinto beans. So we're going to dump the pinto beans in there. And I, I don't drain them. I use the entire liquid. My favorite is golden homily or white homily or hominy, excuse me. Uh, hominy is something that I grew up eating. I absolutely love it. And it uh, just adds kind of a different flavor of corn. And then um, I have this big 24 ounce can of diced tomatoes in its own juice or in tomato juice. And I'm gonna dump that in there. And then last but not least, uh, some chicken broth or chicken uh, stock. There's so many different brands out there. No matter what you choose, you know, think about your own personal health goals. So you might be a little concerned about sodium. Canned goods are the most nutritious thing you can have, especially if you're thinking about budget these days and who isn't. Um, and also, you know, you can get good quality food. As a dietitian, I've been, you know, so privileged to go on a few farm tours where I actually follow the food from the farm to the cannery. In the case of tomatoes, that whole process happens in about four hours. And when you're eating canned uh, tomatoes in particular, you're actually getting additional nutrition because of the, ad, uh, the additional um, uh, 
um, beta carotene and carotenoids. So it's actually very, very healthy to eat canned goods. So when it comes to, you know, food of any kind, it's important to think about, you know, what is my budget? And don't worry about, you know, if it's canned, if it's frozen, just get it in there. That's the important thing. So many people along the way get really kind of confused because of all the noise on social media. And uh, when you try to Google anything, you'll hear all different messages, but it's important to just get it in your diet. You know, don't, don't worry if it's, if it's, it's GMO, don't worry about if it's organic, worry about getting it in your diet because the real problem is not getting enough. So you can always find the no added salt. And uh, what I do is I put this on the stove and just cook this to a rolling boil. And then once it boils, I saute it, or excuse me, I simmer it for about 20 minutes. I'm also gonna add some ranch seasoning dressing and then a package of your taco mix. And this is gonna give it that kind of a taco flavor. So how easy is that? We're gonna put it on the stove and let that cook for about 20 minutes. And you have a wonderful meal. And honestly, um, right now I'm just cooking for my husband and I, so it makes a lot. You can see how full my stock pot is. And uh, I like to put them in individual containers and just put a, pop them in the freezer. If you don't have space for that, you can chill the soup, put it in Ziploc bags so that it freezes flat. And then when you're ready to go, you just thaw it out and zap it in the microwave for a quick and easy meal or snack. And you have everything you need in here. You have all your food groups. So um, this, is, this is something that we do regularly at our house. And you can make it fuller or you know smaller however you want if you want to add different vegetables if you want to add more vegetables if you want to fill the whole stock pot you can add you know a lot more chicken broth to the mix so the nice thing is i when i'm cooking the reason i enjoy it so much is it's sort of a culinary art i get to create my own version of whatever the recipe is so don't get caught up in recipes you know just to see what Decide what you like and add what you want. You can add different herbs and spices. When this is done, you can crumble some tortilla chips over the top. You can add some cheese, maybe some slices of avocado. But, you know, keep in mind, uh, always portion control. And, uh, you know, always, um, you know, in a nice container so that it's pleasing to the eye. So it's so important to think about taking care of yourself, especially when you're a care provider, because if you don't take care of yourself, no one else will, and you won't be there for your loved one. So anyway, that is another favorite, and we eat a lot of that in the winter, especially. Okay, we're gonna move on to another idea. And uh, this one is really quick and easy. Um, Many people don't know what to do with tuna. Um, we all know that because of the beneficial effects of omega-3 fatty acids, which is a type of fat contained in fish, it's very beneficial for brain health, for heart health. It's a natural uh, blood thinner that uh, keeps our cardiovascular system you know, healthy. Um, a lot of times it's hard to get fresh fish you know, or you don't want to run to the store every day. You want to do a grocery shop maybe once every two weeks. With fresh seafood, you want to cook it that day or the next day. Um, using frozen products are perfectly fine. Typically, when they catch the fish, they freeze it. And then, um, you know, you don't thaw it until you're using it. So that's a good option. But I always like to have tuna, canned salmon in my pantry and just build a meal from those. Now this particular little packet is called a lunch to go. So this is expensive. You know, it has everything you need, but if you're eating this at home, you have everything in your fridge. You have your mayonnaise, maybe a little relish, stir it up with your tuna, but these are available for quick and easy, you know, snack and meal ideas. But if you are, um, if you're wanting to do another idea, like something a little bit more preparation, I like to use maybe a can because you might be uh, able to catch those a little bit uh, less expensive at the grocery store. The other kind of packaging that they have now are these little tuna packs 
which are really beneficial if you're wanting to get a different variety of flavors. This one happens to be lemon pepper. There's teriyaki, there's all different flavors. This particular recipe is your, your typical salad where I'm adding some mayonnaise, but think about that addition of a little bit of non-fat yogurt, plain unflavored yogurt, that'll give you some extra calcium. I chopped up a, a honey crisp apple because I love them and a little bit of celery because I love the crunch. So anytime you um, are thinking about what to add, think about what, what matters and you want more fiber in your diet. It's gonna make it so much more appealing. Um, so I'm gonna mix all that together. Now, if I don't wanna add the, the uh, or take the time actually to add the apple in my salad, you can certainly just eat the apple as a side dish with your tuna salad. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. So here's my easy peasy chicken, or excuse me, tuna salad. I was gonna say chicken of the sea. And um, you can add whatever you want. You can go a little more sweet. You can go a little more savory, whatever your preference. So that is one idea with tuna. Another one that's really quick and easy is, um, is something like uh, a salad. And one thing that I enjoy doing is taking my little packet that is lemon pepper flavored. And I like to mix that. And in that bowl, I'm gonna put some cannellini beans. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just building a meal with a little more variety. The cannellini bean, any bean, is really a good source of plant protein. And you're getting, um, you know, wonderful fiber. You're also getting other nutrients. So I like to add some cannellini beans in with my tuna, give it a little squeeze of lemon, but you can even leave that out. Maybe a little bit of olive oil if you want. And then just stir that up with a little bit of minced onion and even some uh, minced garlic if you'd like. And this makes such a great little cold salad. You can put that in the refrigerator and chill it. And then when it's time to eat, you can serve it with some whole grain crackers or even better yet, you can take your lettuce leaves and do kind of like a lettuce wrap. And uh, again, this way you're gonna be getting fewer calories and you're adding another vegetable. So anytime you want that better bang for your buck, you're gonna add the veggie. So that's another quick and easy meal idea using those little tuna packets. And um, you know, how easy is that? You know, I haven't counted, but we've certainly made a lot of different uh, dishes today using really easy, simple ingredients that take no time. I can take that tuna that I made and put that on a whole grain English muffin. And if you're looking for more fiber, you always want to choose the 100% whole grain, not just the multigrain, but it should say 100% whole grain. So you're getting the added fiber. And then maybe you're going to sprinkle some cheese on here and make an open faced tuna sandwich. So again, you know, use what you have be creative and all these are written down for you so that you can um, you know, use some different ideas in your meal planning. So that's what we have for tuna. Another quick and easy meal that we do quite often in my house is what I call sheet pan dinners. And just for the sake of time, I actually prepared this ahead of time so that you can see I use sweet potato because that's what I had in my pantry. I used some uh, frozen broccoli that I used from the stir fry. I had some red bell peppers, some red onions. And all I did was drizzle a little bit of oil over the top, maybe a hint of salt and pepper. And I threw it in the oven on 450 and I roasted it for about 15 minutes. And honestly, these are pretty much done. The higher the temperature in your oven to roast a veggie, the quicker it's gonna roast. So it depends on your timing. If you wanna get done really quick, chop everything up similar so that it all cooks about the same, throw it in the oven. And then what I'll do is kind of slide these over and maybe put my chicken tenders or maybe I'll put my little fish filet and then I'll throw it back in the oven for generally another 10 to 15 minutes 
depending on the thickness of your protein. Uh, fish takes 10 minutes per inch. So you throw that back in and when you pull it out, not only are, are your veggies done, but your fish is done and you have your whole meal you know, in one plate. So this is what um, I think that uh, we need to really think about more often in terms of you know, eating and you can use frozen veggies. You don't have to use fresh. Now, if you don't wanna turn on your oven, again, do it all on the grill if you have a grill. I have some grill pans that actually look like stir frying and I'll just throw the same mixture in a grill pan and toss it around with my grill on a high grill, you know, high heat. And uh, before you know it, your whole meal is ready. So very, very simple and quick. All right, so we can't have a meal without having a little sweet after, at least everybody feels that way. I think people feel cheated if they don't really uh, get to have a sweet, I like to call it sweet endings. So when I think about nutrition, I think about what is that one food group that's kind of hard to get into our meal time. You know, I put some apples in the tuna, but fruit generally, I like to save that for my sweet because it's a natural sweetener. You know, I have, uh, I've heard from clients that they've given up fruit because it's too high in sugar. And I, I scratch my head on that one because when I think about fruit in general, I think about how wonderfully sweet, how much fiber and how many vitamins and minerals I get from this. And it's not something that I want to eliminate. It's something that I want to embrace in my diet. So what I like to do is real quick and easy things. One is uh, like a frozen sorbet. I take my frozen veggies and in this case, it's frozen strawberries. And you can basically just zap that in your, um, your blender and uh, you can eat it frozen and it tastes just like sorbet. If you wanna add another food group to make it a little bit more blood sugar friendly, if you wanna add another uh, nutrient like calcium and vitamin D, add your yogurt. And I add just a spoonful of yogurt with 10 ounces of fruit and I turn on my blender. It's gonna get very loud for a minute. If I can find my lid, maybe, maybe I won't blend it. <laughs> but um, all you have to do is blend that up and it is so smooth and creamy. It's just like ice cream, but it's so much better because it's just fruit and yogurt. So that, that is enough, one idea that you can do as a sweet ending. Another one that's really, really fun that um, I learned when I taught a child's cooking class is what I call three, two, one cake. Three, two, one. And what I do is I take two boxes of cake mix. One has to be angel food. And the other one can be anything from carrot to chocolate to carrot cake to uh, strawberry, you know, whatever it is you want. I mix all that together. And um, mix it really thoroughly with my angel food cake mix, cake mix. And I found over the years when I do this, that it's better to get one of the name brands as opposed to an off brand. And I haven't quite figured out why that is, but um, I want to be sure that I mix this together really well. This is such a fun treat at three o'clock in the afternoon when you feel like you need a snack, like I do. I get one of my microwavable safe mugs and I measure, I measure three tablespoons of the mix, one, two, three, and then my two is two tablespoons of water, two tablespoons of water, and I zap this in the microwave for one minute. It becomes this decadent treat that takes no time at all, that's really special. And it gives you that little bit of a decadent treat. And if you wanna get even more special, you can add some Cool Whip to it, whip topping, and maybe even some berries or some frozen berries that you've, that you've opened from the freezer. And uh, it just kind of rounds out that little treat and it gives you another food group. So we're gonna wait till that's done. I'll show you the end result. 
but you can do the same thing using some of the same ingredients by making a little parfait. I like to buy the plain unflavored or the vanilla flavored yogurt. Greek yogurt gives me that extra protein. And if it's plain unflavored or, or vanilla, I'm not getting quite as much sugar, but we don't really worry about um, the sugar content of some of these because when you're looking at it, some of them are measuring um, the amount of lactose. So when you're looking at the sugar content, it'll also show you the lactose. So you wanna kind of veer, um, veer away from ones that have a lot of added sugar, like the chocolate flavored ones or the ones that have added preserves or jams or jellies. I get the plain and flavored and then I add what I want to it. All right, let's take a peek at our little mug cake. It's gonna be kind of hard for you to see that, but I'm gonna to top it with a little bit of whip, whip topping and add some berries. And um, it's this wonderful and decadent little chocolate cake for your afternoon treat, okay? This little yogurt sundae that I'm making started with vanilla unflavored or uh, vanilla flavored yogurt. In this case, I'm using some peaches because I, I have some canned peaches in my pantry. So I'm gonna add some canned peaches. And the ones that I chose today are uh, in peach juice or sometimes they come in pear juice concentrate. And um, to have a little crunchy topping, I might add some graham crackers. This little package is um, some, they're called um, honey made, honey graham. And I'm gonna top my, my little sundae, you know, with some topping. Maybe I want a little extra hint of flavor, so I might do a little cinnamon. How fun is that? If I have some granola type cereal, I might sprinkle a little bit of that on top, you know, for that extra crunch instead of the graham crackers. But um, you know how easy. Now, if I don't want to do the plain and flavored or the vanilla yogurt, I can certainly do this very same treat using cottage cheese, which I love. It's a great source of protein. Um, it's a little variety of texture. So, you know, just think about ways of, of changing it up. And, um, and then another idea which you can use with yogurt is I call them apple cookies or apple slices. What I do is I take my knife and I'm going to cut this apple instead of in wedges, I'm going to cut it crosswise. So I'm going to cut the top off and then I'm going to cut so that it looks like a cookie. And then on top, I can take that same yogurt. Where's my yogurt? And um, I can top my little apple cookie with some yogurt, which is giving me that second food group. And then if I want a little crunch, I'm gonna add my granola topping. If I want some decadence, I can have some mini chocolate chips. I can add some raisins. And this is a wonderful little treat too. You know, quick and easy, a different way to eat an apple. If you don't want the yogurt, you can certainly take another protein source like peanut butter and just spread a little peanut butter on your apple and do the same toppings. Roxana also suggested she, she sometimes subs ricotta cheese for yogurt. Very good, very good. And anything you have in your fridge that you haven't used up. So, you know, again, it's simple, it's easy. And I find that people would eat so much, you know, healthier or balanced if they just had different ideas. And so that's why I just really appreciate the opportunity to be here today to kind of share some of my fun things and quick and easy meals. And there's so much more that we can do. Um, I, like to, um, I like to show a lot of different snack ideas, but you can do a bowl of oatmeal. Uh, when you have oatmeal, whether a breakfast or a snack, you can certainly have, make it with milk instead of water. That adds the protein. You can add to it, um, you know, fresh berries. You could do dried fruit and nuts. I like to buy these packages of nuts and fruit 
that you can buy in bulk or you can buy in packages. These are wonderful uh, as a snack, especially a grab and go. I like to use different energy bars that are more portable if you're on the go. Uh, little baby bell cheeses. My granddaughter just loves peeling these. These are so much fun. How about making your own trail mix using the cereal you have in your pantry, like a whole grain Cheerio mixed with goldfish, some dried nuts and fruits, you know, whatever it is you like, you can tailor it to what you enjoy. Um, skinny popcorn is always a really good choice. You know, don't think of it as a starch, think of it as a whole grain. It's absolutely a wonderful filling snack. And then if you uh, have a little bit more time, you can have like a hummus uh, with some whole grain pita chips or maybe some of these wonderful sweet peppers that I like to keep in the refrigerator for snacking. And uh, that is a very hearty snack right there, full of protein because the hummus is made from chickpeas. So there's a never ending amount. So again, Prepare yourself by making a list before you go to the grocery store just to have some of these things on hand that um, hardly any of them are really perishable. You could store those in your pantry and your freezer and they go a long way. So I hope that that kind of gives you, you know, some really good information to kind of carry you forward through the spring and think about um, some of the energy boosters versus energy busters. Energy busters like caffeinated beverages. A lot of times we chug coffee, you know, to give us energy. And really it's a stimulant. And after a couple of hours, it not only zaps your energy for that day, but it might even zap your uh, ability to sleep, which then zaps your energy for tomorrow. So it's, it's not a good choice. Um, think about making sure you get a lot of hydration. You can't get, you know, too much water. Um, the Institute of Medicine suggests that women need about 11 cups a day and men 16 cups. But always remember, you're getting fluid and liquid from other foods that you're eating, including vegetables and soups and other beverages. So it's important to get adequate hydration, especially now that we're getting into the uh, hot summer months. You know, don't skip meals. You know, think about food as fuel. It's giving me the, the, the nutrients that I need to, to keep going to help with my loved ones. And, um, you know, swap out those refined carbohydrates for things that are a little bit higher in fiber that have more staying power, that give you the nutrient um, lasting energy. And then also remember to add protein at every meal, which helps sustain your blood sugar, which prevents the, you know, cra uh, the cravings that people have mid afternoon. And then also think about, you know, think about the frequency that you eat. Some people do better with small frequent meals throughout the day. If you're like me, I'm a three meal a day and I can tell you when it's three o'clock because I'm ready for my snack. So it, you know, think about, you know, what works for you and not what uh, everyone else needs. And then moderate your alcohol because alcohol is another zapper of energy. It's not something that really provides good nutrition. And then of course, think about other lifestyle tips like, making sure that you move your body, you know, don't stay uh, sedentary. You wanna make sure you get sufficient sleep and then also learn how to manage stress because it's never gonna go away. We just have to learn how to manage it. And then practice mindfulness, including eating mindfully. And um, that's, you know, like eating slower and more purposeful meals and really pay attention to whether you're feeling full or hungry. And that kind of is a, the best clue to, you know, how much you're actually eating. And uh, listen to the body. I think that's really a key message is honor your body as you may never have before. And I want to end today with uh, a little poem that I found that I really loved. And it's a caretaker kind of poem. It's like an, like an angel, you are the hands of kindness and care. You offer support and compassion in difficult times. You are steady and encouraging and your comfort will never be forgotten. Those you touch are beyond blessed. I want to thank you so much for attending today. You've, best, you've blessed me by your attendance. And uh, if I could ever be of any service to you, my information will be in the handout packet. So thank you.
And uh, I think Katie is going to do a little uh, drawing for one of the books that I co-authored, The Dash Diet for Dummies. And uh, so take it away, Katie and Kimberly. Yay, thank you so much, Cindy. I'm so excited to try so many of these recipes. I really like how so many of them are good for like one or two people because that's kind of where I am in my life right now. So thank you. Uh, Kimberly, do you want to say some words or do you want me to do the giveaway? I want to say a few words first and then we'll do the giveaway. Thank you so much, Cindy and Katie for being here today and for all of you who decided to join us. Today's program wouldn't be complete without us just sharing a little information about the senior source and the caregiver support program. So I'm gonna quickly share my screen. Um, wanted to pop something up really quickly just to share with all of you to, to give you a little bit more information about the senior source in general. Um, I don't know if, if many of you, if this is your first time being with us today, but if so, I just wanted to let you know that the senior source is a nonprofit organization that is located here in Dallas, Texas. And we have been serving the community for 60 years. Our mission is to enhance the quality of life of older adults in Dallas. And we service Dallas, Collin, and Rockwall counties. But if you're living outside of those areas and happen to join us today, and you call our organization, we are still will be able to point you in the right direction of, to local services near you that can be helpful. But in addition to that, you know, we are doing this program as a part of the caregiver support program at the Senior Source that I direct. And so myself and my colleagues are always here to assist you by providing you with the following services. We provide information and resources for support and assistance. We offer care consultations with individuals and families. And what is a care consultation? Basically, all that means is that we are willing to sit down and talk to you um, virtually or in person about your particular caregiving needs and provide you with resources, whether they're internal resources or community resources to meet your needs. We provide caregiver education webinars and seminars, much like what you're doing today. And we have a whole slew of more programs happening in April. So please come back and join us. We also provide durable medical equipment and incontinent supplies or just other supplies that we have on hand. So if you're in need of something, please give us a call because we may have it in our in our caregiver closet to, to support you and provide that for you. And then last but not least, we offer support groups for caregivers. You know, there are so many different ways caregivers need support. Um, today was just one example by helping you to focus a little bit of time on your nutrition, but it's always a good idea to join with other people who are traveling along this same road with you and get insight on their caregiving journey that can help you in your own journey in assisting your loved one. So we meet once a month. It's the every third Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of the month at different times. If you wanna know more about our support groups or any of our other programs and services, please contact us at the Senior Source. Our phone number is 214 853-5700. You can also find us online at thesenorsource.org. So thank you again for joining us today.